I'm happy to state, President Cruz, that we are working on a program by which we expect to provide for the first time in the state of Indiana some $50 million for student scholarships and student loans, which we feel will be very helpful in meeting the responsibilities of this state in education. I am deeply aware that the success of this administration, the success and the future of the state of Indiana depends upon quality education in the state of Indiana. And I repeat my pledge to do everything to promote that effort in this state. Dr. Pruse comes to Ball State University succeeding one of Indiana's outstanding educators, President Emeritus Emmons. We salute him for the work he has done. And on behalf of the people of this great state, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. John J. Pruce as president of Ball State University. Thank you. Frequently, we struggle to defend the existing pattern of the university life rather than to admit to its possible inadequacies and to set about to develop more satisfactory ways of educating our students and conducting our institutional lives and work. The eminent philosopher Pogo was nothing short of profound when he observed, I have seen the enemy and he is us. <laughs> In the final analysis, we are judged by our results and not by our ways. If we choose to do so, we can try new methods, provided only that we satisfy ourselves and the academic community of which we are a part, that the changes we propose give promise of enabling us to achieve our goals more satisfactorily. Admittedly, the challenge to change has produced frustration and more in those whose proposals have not been accepted. That is the risk we always face. Though most of us openly advocate change as a hope for improvement, we must recognize that change is often threatening, even painful to contemplate. We are at best reluctant to do away with old and familiar patterns, so the battle may be hard. Let us make certain of only one thing, and that is that we too do not get caught up in the argument over the shape of the conference table around which we gather to discuss our plans. Let us always deal with the central issue. If we are able to demonstrate that we can deal with our own problems intelligently and constructively, I am certain that another significant opportunity is ours, namely, the maintaining of our autonomy and our distinctiveness. Clark Kerr recently noted, it is the best of times and the worst of times for higher education, and each could not be without the other. It is a season of success, and it is also a season of despair, and they are the same season. There are those who would seek to rule us from outside the university. This must not be allowed to happen, for it would destroy the university as we know it and have known it, as it serves and has served. Through high standards of purpose and self-expectation, and through rigorous effort to live up to these standards, we can continue to be a place where the pursuit of truth and the advancement of learning can exist without domination by outside influences.